know, you guys are just sitting in your seat, but you're going to have to do some more. You're going to have to figure out where this mountain is. All right. Guesses? It's Italy. Good <laughs> start. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the 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 nature the the title of this talk is um, is volcano volcanoes of Italy. So you're right. So which one? Which one? Etna. Etna. Okay, we got a winner. I didn't give a prize, though, did I? All right. So uh, Etna, and uh, I don't know if that's a comet or not. It looks like one. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to talk about this and uh, and uh, current risk. And if we have time, uh, there's Vesuvius in the background, and then you'll see these figures that they are plaster casts of the of what was left in the ash of a, of a human body. And those are actual, uh, um, you know, basically they they poured plaster in there to save them, and then that's this is what you see. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit when we get going here. Uh, if we have time, uh, we're going to do the Honga Tonga as well. That's that's the other side of the the world, of course. But you know, just just know there's a segue. I'll I'll tie them all together. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is what we're going to do. Um, so the the agenda is, you know, you know why why are there so many volcanoes in in Italy? So um, on another another topic or another slideshow that I give, it's it's actually about the sixth in the world. Um, any guesses on which country has the most? Indonesia. Huh? Indonesia. Indonesia. That's that's close. Close. Yeah. Keep going. You're sitting in it. <laughs> it's in the U.S. The U.S. has got the most volcanoes in the whole world. So there you go. And these these are all the the, the products that you see coming out of volcano. Uh, some of them are are less dangerous than others, but just know that these volcanoes. And one of the reasons uh, my wife and I, we were over there for a geology conference, uh, I noticed that all these, these four volcanoes that we're going to concentrate on, which is Vesuvius, Campe Flaregre, and uh, Etna and Stromboli, um, those four volcanoes have four different volcanic styles. So the question is, they're near a subduction zone, and so why, why are they different? So that's what we're going to explore tonight. Uh, so that's what this is, and these are all the volcanoes that we're going to touch on and uh is this working here yeah okay um and then like i said we're going to end up with santorini it's a submarine volcano and so is this one that's a segue all right see so these are the list of all the volcanoes and you can see where they're at on the map and um am i okay from a zoom audience point of view i don't want to show my back or anything yeah stay close to the uh right this way uh yeah you're good Okay. All right. So um, anyway, this is a, a close-up of all the volcanoes, and uh, the green ones are the more active ones, and uh, and then you can see Etna in, in the red there, and the orange Stromboli is the red. And but um, anyway, these are the ones we're going to talk about. Uh, Campe Florege is uh, burning fields. Is what that means in Italian. And uh, then we're going to move on to the ones further south, and they're together. And then Stromboli, and then we're gonna uh, we're not going to talk about volcano, but we are going to talk about Marsili uh, Seamount. And uh, one of the things about all the volcanoes here, as you can see, uh, the Icelandic and the Hawaiian are similar; those are basaltic, uh, effusive type volcanoes. But these four lower ones are all named after what's gone on in Italy, and so and they go from uh, a fairly uh, I won't say Stromboli's tame, but they go from uh, less vigorous to more vigorous. The Plinian is the, by far the most explosive, and uh, there's no accident that they were all defined here. And uh, Pliny himself, uh, younger, he, he witnessed the eruption of, of Vesuvius, and so he, he said the uh, plume looked just like a pine tree. Now, uh, we're all from the Pacific Northwest and we know what pine trees look like. And so we thought we did, but this is what a pine tree in Italy looks like over here. And so that's what he was referring to is a, an Italian pine tree. So you, you gotta, you know, you got to get your head out of the Northwest sooner or later. Uh, but you can see where Mount St. Helens had a plenty of eruption. And so um, those are the ones that scare most volcanologists. It's a plenty of eruption. Um, this is where we're going to go. Um, you got the first three up by Naples. Uh, they're called the Napoleon Group. And then the, the two stars there, one's Marsili and the other one's Stromboli. And then Edna at the bottom. And then over in the 
far right corner is, is uh, uh, Santorini. We're going to talk about that. Um, and this is why we have all the volcanoes. You got a weird uh, loop in the uh, subduction zone between the African plate and the Eurasian plate. And it, it fools around like that. And, you know, this, you know, it's, it's, this is, this has been going on for quite a while. Um, on a different talk, uh, you, you've got about uh, two miles thick of limestone there and limestone turns to marble and Italy is famous for marble. So it's all connected in terms of this uh, great expanse of limestone up in, in Italy. And th th that is where on another talk, we'll talk about the KT boundary, but we'll say that uh, for another day. Um, but this is another uh, shot of the subduction zone looping around Sicily there. And, th and as you guys all know, when you have a subduction zone going down, just like we have at the Cascades, you do have uh, uh, the melt. Uh, when this stuff melts, it, it basically works its way up. And because this is uh, lighter than the magma, this, this brings the heat up and then you end up with the volcanoes uh, as an expression of the release of that heat. And here's just a shot of the magma chamber down there. And these tend to be um, seven to eight kilometers down. And depending on if you're following what's going on over in Iceland, uh, you know, that magma chamber is real close. And then when it, the magma moves up towards the, uh, the, the earth, you actually get an inflation. And that's what you're seeing. And they can actually, based on the amount of magma that moves up closer to the surface, they can al almost predict when the eruption is going to, start and stop. So that's kind of what we're learning up there in Iceland. So these are the three volcanoes that are we're going to study at first. Uh, you got Vesuvius on the, on the right, and that's the last eruption is what that means. Uh, it was in 1944. Campo de Flore was uh, back in 1500s. And then Ashia over in the coast there is over on the, on the, in the on an island out there is, is 1302. And, uh, but uh, all these were basically, they all came about about a million and a half years ago is when this magma chamber moved up in there. And you have, uh, basically it's, it's a mix of all the uh, uh, volcano, the lava, you got the sedimentary rocks and you have an inter interfingering. Uh, most of these were probably submarine volcanoes at one time. And uh, they all have this, uh, what they call, uh, how do you say this, Bradycism? I can't say that right. Anyway, it's a term that the, they use to, to talk about these inflation, de deflation cycles. And why they are concerned is, is that the ones, the, the two of them, especially between Vesuvius and Campe Floregre, are related. So one, when one uh, inflates a little bit, the other one inflates a little bit. And if you guys are tracking what's going on in Kilauea, that's exactly how that volcano works too. When you have the magma move up into the magma chamber up there at Kilauea, uh, basically it, it'll, it'll soon have an eruption. And when we had the eruption or the lava flows that showed up down in Pahoa in 2018, uh, they had two big lava lakes up there by Kilauea and the volcanologists were out there watching and all of a sudden the lakes disappeared. And they said, oh, so... That's that's a geological term for water. <laughs> so, local. yeah. Uh oh, anyway. So, so my wife and I, Charlotte, we get up on the top of the volcano, and we're looking back. And, and the yellow line is is the train line. And this is a little bit of a travelogue for you guys. This is very easy to do um, by yourself. We flew into Naples, stayed downtown Naples, and we took the train out. It's uh, four bucks, thirty five minutes to get out there. You can see Campe Floregre off in the distance and then Ashia over in the, in the island out there. So those are the three volcanoes. You see they're very close to each other. Um, this is the station you get off, um, and that's Pompeii Scavi. Scavi means ruins or a dig in Italian, so that's, that's how it's got its name. And this is, it's actually pretty convenient to get here. Now, when you get here, you have a choice because you can go to Pompeii over here or you can go to Vesuvius. And there's a bus stop right behind that station where it's really easy to get on the bus and the, that'll take you up to Vesuvius. Now, when we were there in 2022, it, um, they were still operating under COVID type restrictions. And so you had to get a time ticket and they were 
they were, I think, pretty uh, strict on that, but I think they probably relaxed that. But it was fairly inexpensive and very easy to do. So if, you, if you're on your own, it's uh, what you want to do is uh, take the train out here and, uh, and you make a decision. Each, each uh, tour takes about four hours. If you do it both in one day, it's a long, long day. We did it in two days. Um, so this is, uh, this, this is what the train is leaving town. Now, if you want to continue on to Sorrento and that's down where the Amalfi coast, you can do that too. This train continues on and that's, that's a good place to go. Or if you want to go to Capri, you can do that. So it's, it's, it's easy to do. It's, uh, and, the uh, trains were fine. Um, this is what Vesuvius looks like. Those are all the monitoring stations they have on Vesuvius. And, uh, you know, the first thing we did was. Well, let's just talk about Vesuvius. It's, it's been around, all these volcanoes are all got really active about 300,000 years ago. And uh, basically it really got busy as a Soma eruptive center, uh, was really busy about uh, 22,000 years ago. Um, and then the eruptors, what we see is uh, what we call Vesuvius started about 2000 years ago. And we had the eruptions, uh, as you know, in 79 AD, we're gonna talk about and then it's uh, basically it was nearly continuous for uh, you know about 400 years there. So, and right now they're uh, they're calling this green. You can actually go on the web page and you can type in uh, status of, of all these volcanoes, and they'll come up and they'll tell you what what they think. You can do that here in the states too. You've got the uh, Alaska Volcanic Observatory in Hawaii. And you can do that here. So. Um, this is again what you're looking at. You can see the Soma crater that is off in the distance there. And this is what it looked like in 44. It did have a little bearing on the, on the war, uh, but um, that was the last time it erupted. And there were some fatalities associated with that eruption. Uh, but this is kind of what it looks like on top. You know, this is the hike that you can do. You can take the road up uh, and then you uh, basically hike to the top here. Uh, this is where you start right here, and then you just go on up there. Um, but it's this is this is the way where the bus drops you off right there by those white vehicles, and then you just start on up. And it's it's fairly easy to do. It's not a not a lot of elevation gain, uh, maybe a thousand feet or so, maybe maybe less. But it's it's a straightforward hike, and this it takes you up to here. Um, and then you walk around to the far side of the crater over there is where you can walk to, and then, then you walk back down. So again, four hours is plenty to go up there. Um, um, and this is just some scenes from the volcano while you're there. And then this is the view from the top. You can see Campe Florege over there. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And then Naples and the airport's just to the right of that sign, Naples there. Um, this is looking the other way towards Pompeii, and so this is, uh, it's about six miles from the crater to Pompeii, so they had less than uh, like seven or eight minutes uh, as a warning is all they had. Uh, this this uh, pyroclastic cloud that we're going to talk about, the flow, uh, or it's called a Nui Nardan, uh, they, they flow at about 200 miles an hour, and you say, how can it flow that fast? And what What happens, because you all know when a particle drops out of the sky, it's only a terminal velocity, it's only 128 miles an hour, so how, how can it go 200? But what happens is you have a, an air blast ahead, and so the, the, the flow, the pyroclastic flow, is falling into a partial vacuum, and so that's why it goes so freaking fast. So uh, you don't have a chance once you see that. But this is a top, and then the, this is where we turned around, went back, um, and then... Uh, walked out on down and then Pompeii is down there. It's a little more of a close-up. Uh, and then this, uh, and as you all know, the, the, the eruption happened in 79 AD. And then now we'll take you through Pompeii here real quick. Um, but but it's, um, we picked a day that was very hot. It was probably, you know, 90 degrees. It was real warm. Uh, and there's quite a few people where, but that's a scene from, uh, Pompeii, looking back to Vesuvius, we were just up here at this uh, nick of the crater right there is where we were. So six miles and, uh, you know, not a lot between you and the volcano. Um, this is a, a shot from um, PB, uh, public broadcasting system, NOVA, that shows uh, what it looks like from a, from a drone. 
Uh, but this basically was all covered with ash, and you know they didn't know the town was there for quite a while. Um, and uh, they're they're doing a lot of excavation as as you go. Uh, but you know they're 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 working at it still. They've got a lot of uh, of of artifacts that they've uncovered that are quite quite uh, unique. And this this must have been had this not been ex, uh, ex, extinguished by the volcano, it might have been a, a pretty amazing civilization. These are uh, they just found these these artifacts this week. So they're uh, you know it's just pretty amazing stuff that they have out there. And then they were working as they go. Um, this is another artifact that they have. This is some bread that they found. It was sitting there, and you can see that uh, you know right there is where they tested the the dough to see if it was had risen enough before they baked it. Uh, it looks well baked now. But um, and these these uh, these are some of the bodies we talked about a minute ago, and and just their posture tells you a lot about the eruption. And I'll get into that in a second here. But these are all prone, and you know they're been there in that position. That's exactly how they found them when they, you know, when they were covered by the ash. You know, and that's uh, basically their their uh, body decayed away, and they, they left a, a intact cavity there that they then subsequently poured plaster in there. So that's how they got these body shapes, and they're they're very accurate, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, this is a, a, a different kind. You see, this is kind of a raised position instead of laying down. There's a reason for that. Um, and also, um, they had very pained expressions on. There's also a reason for that, too. And we'll get into that. So this is a, a geologist looking at the different flows that happened when Vesuvius went off. It was basically uh, this first phase. What, look, you can see it lasted 18 hours. Um, and basically darkened the sky, and it was all this pumice, okay? Pumice on top of pumice on top of pumice, and you can go back and, and see the layer of pumice there at the bottom here. So you can see that, and then, all right, so 18 hours of pumice, what's it do to a roof? Okay, and so that's what happened to these folks. Uh, all the folks that were laying prone all got crushed by the roof, they basically stayed there. This is roughly about a third of the uh, the um, people that uh, the fatalities were because of the the plaster, or excuse me, the pumice on top of the roof, and it collapsed the roof. And they thought they were safe, and then the roof came down. Um, so how do they build their roofs now? Same way. So, so you know, in a sense, they they haven't learned, and these are the taken right right near Pompeii. So, um, you know, um, history has a way of repeating itself, I guess that's about the best thing I can say here. Um, all right, so the second phase is right up here, and you can see this is a dense layer right here, and uh, Scott Burns and all the other geologists in the room know that's, that's a different, you can see it's a lot finer grained. All right, so, all right, so that's uh, basically, it's the pyroclastic flow layer, all right, so this is, this is what the, again, uh, PBS shows a, a mock of what it looks like coming at you. And if you see that, you're, you're, you're basically not going to see much more. I mean, you're going to be off to the, the other side of the, uh, the world, wherever that is. But um, again, they're 200 miles an hour, these things go, and they're super hot. They're roughly about 1,000 degrees. I mean, they just came from a... I mean that's cool compared to the magma chamber, which is about fifteen hundred. So it's uh, but it's a thousand degrees, and when this stuff hits, uh, it it basically goes way up into the sky, and uh, it's a finer particle than the, the pumice. The pumice tends to be light, and it comes down in a light thing. This is fairly dense stuff, uh, a lot of fines, and uh, basically when it it comes up, it it basically cools and it falls out of the 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 uh, cylinder the heat cylinder that's that's propelling it up and once it gets out there it comes crashing down and when it comes down that's where it gets its velocity that's where it retains its heat and then it basically covers the uh the globe and it can go in any direction usually it's gonna probably go in a prevailing wind but this in this particular case whenever you get the 
the collapse, that's what you're worried about. And Pompeii would be right down in this neck of the woods. So that's, that's the worry. Uh, again, that you had the two phases. You had the pumice phase, which is full of gas, you know, so the magma's going to get energized or um, it's like popcorn. It'll, it'll fill up with gas and, and it'll, it'll be fairly light. So that's, it, it uh, didn't come down with the surge, but this is the, 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 fi the next stage where the gas has been exhausted and it's more the, the, uh, the, the magma that gets uh, turned into ash and that comes down in a big, big hurry. Again, you only have seconds. Uh, my wife and I go down to uh, Guatemala every year and the Fuego just had a pyroclastic flow in 2018 and killed about 5,000 people. And they knew it was coming and they didn't get out of the way in time. So that's, these things are not to be messed with. When they said to evacuate, uh, that's what you got to do. And that's what Pompeii uh, should have done. And this is kind of what happens in this case. Um, you saw the prone bodies before, but but these, these folks uh, really were... Uh, they were basically killed by the, the, the pyroclastic flow, which creates a kind of a, what they call a cadaveric a spasm, which is basically you're, you're ingesting the super hot and your body does a reflex where it basically throws itself out and then basically then, then the ash covers you. So that's, that's a gruesome way to go. I mean, you're gonna only last about a second and then, and then you're gonna be preserved for eternity. Um, just to talk, to finish up on Vesuvius, they are watching it like a hawk. Not only this, but the, the other two volcanoes as well, the Campi Floregre and uh, Shia is from this uh, one. And this is basically, they, they monitor this. Uh, it's got, uh, I can't remember how many instruments on it, but quite a bit, uh, more than Rainier. Rainier's got 93, so it's, I think, about 140 instruments. Uh, and they go down once a month, they go down that cliff that you saw earlier, and basically that's, you can see the people on top and those uh, yellow circle, that's where the climbers, they go down to a, a fumarole that's way down in there. And then they measure the, uh, the CO2, which is being pushed out by the, the fumarole. So that's what they're measuring. And, uh, you know, as long as it's a constant CO2, they think they're okay. Uh, if they start getting water and other gases, then they, they get worried. But so they're watching that real close. The, the last slide on Vesuvius is this one. It's, uh, you know, these are the minor earthquakes that accompany any, any movement in the magma chamber. And uh, this is, you, you divide the number of eruptions they had by the, the years. And then, so this is your recurrence interval. So every five years. So it's when they think they have one. They haven't had one so for what, 80 years. So, you know, they're, they're concerned. Uh, but uh, we'll move on to the next one, which is, Campi Floregre. Um, but before we go into that, uh, this is what they, uh, they're, they're, they're concerned about this one, but, but I did want to say that there's, I, just before I put this slideshow together, that I got a, something from the newscast about the fact that they're selling part of Yellowstone. They're going to put a development in the middle of the caldera. And this is where they're going to put that. And it's, you know, the people are, they're called, called volcano estates for some reason. Uh, but they wanted, wanted to put it right near where the activity was. Now, of course, this is, uh, this is not true, is it? No, not true. Uh, this is exactly what Campi Florica is. Okay, it's, it's 400,000 people. You see there, uh, the population, about 400,000 people sitting on something just like Yellowstone. So we haven't sold the national park yet. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's, that's here, here it is. And you can see it's a, quite a different style than Vesuvius, okay? There's lots of reasons for that. We're gonna get into them here. Uh, but that's uh, 24 different craters. And this is a volcano, it's like Kilauea. It goes up and down like a billows. You know, it's just up and down. It, it, it's uh, six to seven meters uh, each cycle. And that's what 20, 25 feet is where it goes up and down. And through the time, you'll see that in the next few slides, uh, just this uh, magma chamber down there. And the reason, uh, you know, I talked to Sheila about uh, doing this slideshow is because of this volcano, because this, uh, it's on an upwards, uh, inflation right now. Just so you know, it's going up. Um, this is an old historic picture. Uh, this has been around for a long time. 
that circle is it's basically, it basically is the super volcano. You can see it's out there in the middle of the, uh, the Bay of Naples. And so, as you can see, um, you know, we're concerned about Yellowstone and, and these folks are living in, on a Yellowstone-like uh, volcanic center. You know, this is kind of the, the they're extremely explosive, uh, full of rhyolite, and uh, you know they're they're definitely the stuff is moving. So this is kind of what it what it looks like. They had some major eruptions in, uh, forty thousand years ago and fifteen thousand years ago, and those are definitely things they worry about. And this uh, brad bradicism is is just another term. Uh, you can see that the, they've had a lot of. Uh, eruptions between the, the VEI is a volcano, uh, volcanic explosive index. And so, you know, if you got ones or twos, um, you know, those are pretty minor. Mount St. Helens is what, a three? I think it was a three, just to give you a scale. Uh, five is, is your, 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 you know, that's kind of what's going down in, in Indonesia right now. Um, some big ones down there. And, uh, you know, they did have a big eruption in 1538. Um, and right now they characterize this uh, volcano as, as a yellow. So they're watching this one. And they have a lot of these funerals over here, as you can see in the lower, lower right. Um, those, are, those are checked daily. And, uh, that, and that's probably the best indication if, you, if you're getting a change in volcano activity is, is, is the, uh, the gas content uh, at, your, at your vents, okay? So they're watching that. Uh, um, this is kind of what it looks like if you go on the web page um, and tell you, you know, what, what's going on there. And uh, again, uh, the whole thing is in that red circle and it's, it's, uh, it's on its way up right now. It's, it's cycling up. I think it started in 2005 and it continues to go up. Uh, just another shot of that. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, you know, if you, I'm sure that house is for sale back there, but uh, not too much different than Yellowstone. I mean, if you guys been to Norris Geyser Basin, that's what you got there. Um, this is uh, what they have looked at the rocks in here. That's something called uh, uh, Napoleon Yellow Tuff is what's underneath the city. And uh, these are basically, uh, you know, pretty major. Uh, you folks that know what Yellowstone's like, if you go outside, you have the Huckleberry Tuff all around Yellowstone. It's two or three miles deep of, uh, of all this ash that went up. It's called a welded tuff. Again, it's kind of like a pyroclastic flow. All that ash goes up and it comes down. You know, it's still hot. And when it, it builds up, uh, you know, foot after foot of this hot ash, it, it actually retains the heat and it'll actually move. It'll actually mobilize. So you get uh, uh, a lot of complexities based on the, this welded tuff that is uh, right underneath. This is under Naples. If you go to Naples, there's a, a tour you can take in downtown Naples that takes you all through these uh, underground tunnels. Uh, but this is uh, one of the things that uh, you can see this thing is on land right now, but this was uh, uh, basically a Roman ruin back around the, uh, I think it was about 100 AD is when this thing was put in. And basically you can see what I circle there is, is this. Uh, basically this was underwater uh, not that long ago. And then, all right, so it was built, it sank, and now it's raised again. And so that's kind of what's going on. So we're talking, you know, like 20, 25 feet uh, in this particular case. And that's that's where it's taken in that you know, uh, circle next to the uh the bay of naples all that underneath there is is part of the the part of the volcano and you can see that's that's where the uh temple of serapis is in Paz, Paz, pazioli say that right anyway uh, this is a shot uh basically up here in the top of of looking to the sea and you can see that's a big uh, roman terrace up there and there's this is underwater too um but basically so Still got a ways to go before that was up, and then this this these lower sketches show where the where the land has gone up and down like that. So I mean, the question to ask is, you know, is that normal? I mean, you know, you can go to Yellowstone, and uh, uh, there's a professor Bob Smith out of Utah who did all his work 
measuring the, the tilt on Yellowstone Lake, where Yellowstone Lake would do this and it would, it would inflate and deflate. So it's, it's characteristic of, of these type of volcanoes that they do this, but this one's a little peculiar. Um, so it's got a cap rock down underneath. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how far down it, but it's, it's uh, basically what they're saying that this, this cap rock is incredibly ductile. And, uh, you know, if you have a, a magma, uh, movement of magma underneath, it just flexes with it. Um, that doesn't make a lot of sense to geologists. They say, well, shouldn't it break through and crack? And then when they are having these inflationary cycles, it'll, it, it will crack to some extent, but this thing will, will bend, but it won't break is what's going on there. This particular uh, rock le level, which means, uh, so that's kind of what's the mechanism. You have the magma chamber underneath there and you got this layer of rock that's just flexing with it, okay? So that's what's unusual about this particular part of the world. And, uh, and that's, uh, they took a, and look at this uh, rock and this is a limestone that's full of fibers, okay? Now, if uh, any of you folks are into engineering, you'll know that this Pazioli cement is probably the best cement. The Romans understood this way back then. This is an incredibly strong cement. And it's composed of these, this basically this fiber filled, uh, you know, concrete, this limestone that they did. So that's what this rock layer is made out of, is this incredibly resilient ductile uh, mass of, it's like a cap rock and it, it acts like a bellows. The whole city goes up and down like that. So right now it's going up, uh, which means you have magma moving up in there. And so that's kind of what the concern is. And you've got these different pictures there. I'll, I'll just say the, the red's inflating and the, and the blue is deflating. So the whole thing, they, they're watching it again, this thing. And that's one reason why I'm giving this talk to you. Just just know that this is not a good place to be living. Go ahead, Clay. Yeah, what, what does it do to the surface, like, to like roads and plumbing, I mean, pipe water supply and so on? Do they have to be constantly yeah. fixing that? Yep. Yeah. I don't know, you know anything, Scott? Yeah. Yeah, everything. You nailed it. And you got it. There's a, there's a, I don't have it in this slideshow, but you can go online and look and there's a, a, a big, uh, it's like a gymnasium that they've given over to the, to the mother nature, uh, where the whole thing is, is, is acting as a vent house for all these fumaroles that come in. And they're using that, that uh, gymnasium is, is, is kind of, that's where they do the testing for all this. Um, again, they're, uh, you know, this is, this thing, uh, it's, it's like Yellowstone. I mean, there's a lot of pundits out there to say, you know, Yellowstone's about to go. Uh, this one probably has got a little more uh, real potential, I guess would be the, more my concern is this one uh, with four Yellowstone. Um, this is kind of, uh, again, like Yellowstone in terms of uh, the fault structures that are around these calderas, that's what this is. And I put Yellowstone on there as a picture. You can see they're pretty much identical in terms of the plumbing. Um, the geology is similar too. This is mostly rhyolitic as is Yellowstone. Um, so this is how they, how they know what's going on down there is they actually uh, record the wave action up on uh, the Bay of Naples and they use the, the wave action, the energy of the waves to, to track these, uh, these uh, basically it's like a size, seismic, uh, seismometer to, to figure out where these uh, more liquid layers are at. So that's kind of what they've figured out. And this is where they think they're at uh, below the cap. Um, but again, it's uh, definitely active. Uh, you know, you probably, I don't think they'd sell you a piece of property, maybe in Yellowstone, but not here. Um, but they, you know, they build them right near it. I mean, they're not, they're not bashful over there. Um, anyway, so that's, we're going to move on to the next one here, um, Shia. Um, let me see how we're doing for time. Uh, so yeah, this is the next one is uh, off the coast of Italy. Now, the reason I threw this in here is because this had some fatalities just a couple of years ago. Uh, but it, but it, was less, it wasn't really uh, associated with the volcano itself. It, it had more to do with a landslide that came whistling down through there. Um, again, volcanoes, water, uh, a magma chamber that moves up into the 
what you have then it is a friable material that's oversteepened with water. You're going to get you're going to get a landslide, and if it's hot, you're going to get a lahar. So those things um, they're kind of endemic to a volcano, and uh, you you basically uh, have to think about that. Um, I'll, let me go back one because what they 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 blame this uh, the fatalities on the fact that they allowed. I mean, these, these are the officials themselves. They allowed illegal building. So they, they were kind of blaming themselves for, for the fatalities. But, you know, as far as volcanism, there's not much going on there. Um, all right, so, well, this is another spot of a, a, a Shia here. And this is what it looks like, Vesuvius from, from that island. Um, now we're going to move south to... Uh, um, We've got um, first Aetna, and then we're going to go to uh, Stromboli. And uh, just to show you that, uh, you know, again, different geology here. Um, again, you had two different types of volcanism up there at Vesuvius and Campe Floegre. Uh, here you've got a different kind, too. Uh, this is basically, Aetna started out just like the Hawaiian Islands. It was basically a basaltic shield volcano. And, uh, you know, then it, everything changed. So uh, basically you had... Uh, it, uh, it was about the same half a million years ago it started, and it's about the same age as Rainier, okay? And then you had a lot of uh, eruption. The big one was at 1669, and it's been fairly continuous eruption as, as Stromboli uh, since then. Um, and I, I couldn't find the current status there, but, you know, you, you'll see what happened in a, in a couple of seconds, what's going on there. But this is just pictures of of Etna. This is the uh, lava flow that was coming down. And you can see they, oops, let me go back here. Um, this is a, a, where a fairly famous effort to basically block the flow here. And they blocked it for a while. The problem was they, they diverted it and they diverted it over here to this, these, these folks over here and they protested. They didn't want the lava coming over. You know, go figure. Uh, but then they it, it basically busted through anyway. It, it didn't do much good to, to divert it, is what they're finding out. Uh, just some historic photos or, or art of, of, of Etna. Um, and again, its, its composition changes a lot over the years. It's a lot more uh, antacidic now. Uh, and it, uh, just a shot of the crater here. And... Uh, this is a, a recent eruption and covered all that. So you, yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they do have a national park here, so they don't let you get too close. Uh, but again, another uh, Plinian eruption there. But this is a men in the news. I'm sure you guys saw this, but this is uh, in this out there, you know, uh, blowing smoke rings to the entertainment uh, of you all. And uh, so this was just in, in the news. I captured these and threw these on here and, and he's explaining it. So basically it's a, it's a type of, uh, uh, it's a new vent and it's a fairly small annulus. And so this stuff, when it pops out there, it creates these rings. So, um, you know, once it widens out, it's not gonna uh, be so fantastic here, but you know, they're, they're watching Aetna too. Um, again, they've got lots of instrumentation on that. And, uh, you know, again, it began uh, all that. Yeah, they call that the, the pile of dead people or something. I don't know why they call it that. Anyway, um, but one of the bigger things that happened with, with again, we talked about uh, when you have a, a, you know, something like what happened in Mount St. Helens, it basically got over steepened and it had a minor eruption and the whole side slid off. Uh, that potential for uh, volcanoes is, is pretty, pretty real. And uh, this is what happened uh, you know, quite a while ago, but the whole flank of, uh, of uh, Etna f fell into, uh, into the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, basically, it was, a, it was a big one. And uh, the eruption or the tsunami basically uh, traveled all the, way, all, all the way over here to, to uh, you know, the Levant, as they call it, over here by where Israel is now. And there's a town there that basically... Uh, they, they only discovered this recently because what you have also is the, the, the sea level or the, you know, the level of the Mediterranean Sea is going up and down. So it was covered, but they, they actually figured this out um, a little bit later. 
Um, this is a, a little video we can show of just this thing going on. But, um, you know, it, um, it was 120 feet high at first, and they know that by the fact that it, it, it basically covered the island near it. Um, but it, it wreaked havoc for the whole uh, uh, expanse all, all the way, all the way to um, uh, across the, where Egypt was and, and uh, all the way to Israel. But, um, you know, it's, uh, I'll just keep going there. Um, just another shot of Edna. Now, this looks pretty prosaic, but I, I put it up here for a reason. Uh, one of the things that's going on at Edna is the whole mountain is moving. All right. So it, it basically erupted on a, you know, a, a abysmal plain down in the bottom of the Mediterranean. You have a lot of salt down there from the time when the uh, Mediterranean Sea wasn't there. So you got a lot of salt. You got a lot of reasons for this thing to creep and uh it's moving so uh just stay tuned you know it's i don't know i think it's moving east all right so we moved to stromboli and uh you know again it's a volcano it's called the lighthouse of the mediterranean um basically lots of eruptions it's been going on it's a slightly different uh basalt coming out there potassium rich uh, it's been erupting for about 5,000 years, and it created a, a tsunami uh, that killed some folks. Um, and then they, they call this a Strombolian eruption. Uh, and this they had a fatality here in 2019 with uh, this, uh, you know, they, they had a hiker up there. You know, it's uh, um, and a rock hit him in the head, so that was the end of him. But what happens here with Stromboli is, is that it uh, basically has a magma chamber that's near the surface, and then it basically it cakes over. And you guys have been watching Iceland, you see how quick that uh, lava, when it comes out of the, the magma chamber, it, it, it's red, and then all of a sudden it turns black. All right, so that's what it's caking over. It's actually turning into a kind of a, 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 a gaseous, you know, a very vesicular rich, uh, layer of, of lava. Um, once it goes out, it's magma. And then once it's outside, when it's outside the cone, we call it lava. So there's a difference. The um, thing that happens is it, as it kicks over, the bubbles of the gas keep keep going under there. Now and then after a while, it blows up. So it's kind of a minor eruption, but it, it throws a lot of rocks up in the air, and it's constant and. Uh, and then Carol was asking me how often it does it. Well, it does it about six times an hour. It does this, it repeats this. So it's not all that different than uh, Old Faithful, okay? Only this is magma. Yeah. And so we call it a Strombolian eruption and uh, lots of it going on. And you see this pretty much around the world, these ty type of small kind of regular, uh, not very dramatic, but you know, when it, goes off, it's like fireworks, you know, but you just don't want to be standing there, with, I mean, without a hard head anyway. But this is the, the tsunami that was created in 2002. And then again, it's, uh, you get magma moving around inside a, a friable cone, it's, you're going to get a landslide. And that's kind of what happened here. And uh, this is a warnings everywhere about not being someplace on the island when a tsunami hits. And so they, they basically have been watching this. Uh, uh, lots of monitors going on in Stromboli. And the, the main reason is, is not so much uh, uh, the immediate area. I mean, the immediate area is bad, but they, they did find a huge tsunami that, that uh, took out part of uh, the Amalfi Coast as well as Naples back in 1343. So this was uh, Petrarch. Uh, was writing about that, and it basically he he said he he called it a big bad storm, but it was a lot more than the storm. It uh, it created a lot of havoc in Naples uh, from Stromboli here, and uh, again they they trenched all this, and you can see over there on the far right you got uh, basically lava, uh, you know, excuse me, um, basically uh, tephra layers as well as. Uh, some of those ash full layers. So that's basically uh, the sand from the uh, tsunami. So you had both. And so that's how they, they keyed it to uh, an eruption that, that oversteepened the, 
the uh, mountain, the mountain slid into the water and the water, you know, created a tsunami. So you get a kind of a double whammy and that's kind of what the risk is up at uh, Rainier as well, if we ever have a, an eruption there and because it's over steepened. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about is uh, why you have four different types of volcanoes nearby. And uh, basically uh, they have very different uh, viscosities Where'd it go? Yeah, they're there. Okay, so the different viscosities of all these volcanoes, um, you guys were waiting for us to get to the science. So here's the science. And so you got, you can see there at uh, Vesuvius and Campi Florebre, it's a lot, it's a lot stiffer. So it's a lot, uh, um, you know, basically it's a lot more uh, viscous. And then you get to Etna and Stromboli, it's, it's a lot more fluid. So you got uh, basically differences in, in the type of, uh, of viscosity. And, you know, I was trying to figure that out, uh, but basically you're right, a lot closer to uh, the magma centers and you get different, uh, I don't know, I was gonna ask Scott that, <laughs> why, why, why we have different, but just suffice to say, there is a difference in velocity or viscosity between these uh, four different volcanoes. Um, Again, the two up by uh, uh, Naples are, are more similar to the two further south down by Sicily. Um, and this is just a diagram of, of all the, the data you collect on that. Um, and then this is the uh, tsunami in, in Naples that, that, that basically hit 1352. And this is, you know, if you type in Stromboli, you're gonna get this. So make sure you, you understand what kind of Stromboli you're looking for. And uh, so it's got a name to it. Uh, but the last one over in Italy is Marsili, and uh, that one they're very concerned about. It's, uh, it's uh, below this, uh, the, the level of the Mediterranean, and it's been very active for, for many years. Um, and it's considered, uh, this is the one they, they worry about too, and it's out of sight, out of mind. So, and it's named after this guy over there in the, in the corner there. Um, anyway, that's Marsili, and uh, this is basically some of the gas coming from the volcano. And uh, you know, it's it's um, that's one they're they're watching real close, um, and that they they consider that one a high risk volcano. Even though you probably how many people have heard of this one? Yeah, I hadn't heard of it either. So, all right, so uh, we're going to talk about another volcano. Have you ever heard of this one? How many? All right, so this one is otherwise known as, uh, 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 how do you say it? Santorini. Santorini, thank you. So this is Santorini, and, uh, and that's the name of the volcano that's underneath it, is, is uh, how many. So if you read that in the, in the press, uh, just know that this is, this is Santorini is the same place, um, but, um, yeah, it looks like a beautiful island, but this is uh, basically, this went off about 1600 years ago, uh, 1600 BC, I should say, so 3600 years ago. And, uh, you know, so it's just what's left of it. And you, you basically had, a, um, it's, it's a trend and, and they basically, it, it, the way it erupts, it's, it, it's kind of like Crater Lake, it, it blows up. And, uh, you know, it, uh, they think it might be the same as uh, the lost city of Atlantis, but it was a big one and it covered the whole area with ash, uh, explosive index of six to seven. And uh, this one's in the news too, and it's for a different reason. They, they had thought they had a handle on the most recent eruption in Santorini and they basically called it a minor. You know, they, they thought, okay, it's gonna go off. If it goes off, it'll just be a, an explosive index of, of about one or you know, zero or one, but they just recalculated all that. And so they have come up with this uh, notion that basically they use submarine, uh, uh, you know, fairly sophisticated uh, devices to measure the, uh, the uh, because they couldn't see it under, the, you know, it was under the sea, they had all this ash that was down on the ocean bottom. And once they calculated it, uh, they said, you know, we, we've got a problem. So they're now saying that the potential for having a, a, a five is, is high. And this, this apparently happened in the year 726. 
So it's a lot more recent than than they. And so the the whole you, you do the recurrence interval and you think, well, you know, we're we're probably in a place or a time we should be worried. So that's uh, that's uh, that's it on Santorini. Um, and it, as far as I'm concerned, um, this is the end of it, and we can keep going if you want, or we can just end it right here. I'll leave it up to Julius. Hey, Scott. Well, A plus. I learned so much, and I know a lot about all these volcanoes, and I learned huge amounts. Uh, but I taught in Switzerland from 1970 to 75. I used to take my students down to Italy. So I was telling him beforehand, uh, when we would get to Vesuvius, we would take the cable car up to the top. Well, it's no longer there. Evidently, it fell apart. And, and, but all my pictures, when we got up to the top, gas was coming out on the inside, and there were no gas vents coming out of the, here, which was... Uh, uh, What's mine? It was mine. Yeah, but it, it was pretty significant in all my, my photos. So oh. it's changed in 50 years, uh, which is number one. And then can't be flagrating. Um, it was rated in the world, the world's most dangerous, dangerous volcano. <laughs> I mean, it is close to a potential eruption, but you got Naples, and everybody around uh, the area, Bill, show that. If you have a major eruption like Vesuvius, uh, you're going to have a lot of people uh, affected. And uh, so it's going to be a major one here. And then Santorini, in my lecture, I always talk about because uh, we believe it's the lost continent of Atlantis. And, uh, and so how do we find out about Atlantis? Well, Plato wrote about that. And his, uh, and his friend Solon went down to Egypt. And in Egypt, they talked about uh, the past the pillars that hit Hercules, there was an incredible civilization that sunk into the sea. Uh, and off of the coast of Santorini, you've got that uh, lost, they have a whole section with all these huge houses underneath that are 15 to 20 feet down. Uh, and, and so they believe that that was it. Now, the age that uh, Solon, uh, the Egyptians told Solon well, uh, he took that back, and it was supposed to be 150,000 or a, a huge amount of time. That's a good idea. It's just like when we say a million to a British person, or a, a billion. To a, a billion to us is a thousand million. To somebody in England, a billion is a million. Million. Same word in English, but different ones. Well, between uh, Arabic and uh, uh, Greek, it was a mistranslation, and the exact timing comes back to. The eruption of Santorini. So we believe that this is the lost continent of Atlantis. So uh, that, that beautiful place that is there. And then you got that gorgeous um, uh, caldera. Yeah. Yes, sir. I got a question. Maybe it's got to come out. Yeah. I noticed, uh, you know, apparently, you know, the African level can meet the Eurasian thing, and everything after that is history, whatever. But I noticed that the African blade has this unique twist that goes. Yeah, I know. Kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, well, be sure to a couple uh, times. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Be sure to repeat the question. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, the question uh, on Zoom is uh, you can see what's on the screen now. We've got that funny little shape of the um, subduction zone um, up into the Adriatic there. Yeah, and it, and it parallels Croatia on the right side or in the east. And yeah, uh, I sort of accounts for the unique shape of Italy, how it sticks out in the middle of that, that the bed. Mm. But all the way. And then it goes down to Greece. So it's another one you showed, which extended it down to Greece. All right. Why is that? Why is that just kind of? Uh, you it, know? Yeah, it's it's just the way the you know the continents fold. I mean, we have the kind of the same situation. We're, we're discussing you know the the shape of the subduction zone here. You know the the the, the what brought the uh, Yellowstone hotspot to us is very similar to this. Uh, basically, you had a spreading center and you had a, a, a mantle plume in the middle of that, and that docked uh, an island that was in the middle of the spreading center. It was something we call Silesia, and it actually docked uh, in, in something we call the Columbia Embayment, which was also part of this, this spreading center. So you got similar type geology that's happened here. Um, and, you know, I don't know exactly this. I, I can research this and, and, uh, and uh, try to get an explanation of why that big loop in there, but uh, oh, yeah. it's just, I just found it very interesting, very unique. 
Yeah. Um, we'll take a question from the Zoom. Yeah. Charlie is uh, asking uh, Pozuoli, is this where they mined Pozuolonic ash to make yes. Pozuolonic cement? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you got it. So the question is uh, Pozuoli uh, cement is, is a fun function of this, this fibrous. Uh, a limestone. Basically, he had a he had a some sort of organism that was able to grow in this, and it basically knits all the uh, the particles of calcium carbonate together. And uh, you know, we we <laughs> you know the you see that you saw those aqueducts. They've been there two thousand years. They don't they don't look like a you know they look like they're brand new. So I mean, you've got to you got to go back and look at history. And I know we we make something called. Uh, uh, fiber, fiber cement. Uh, we we try to emulate that, but I, I don't know that we do as, as good a job as they did. Uh, question? Yeah, go ahead. Regarding the inflation and deflation of campus slavery, it's um, is there any data of what's the time interval and has it been constant over geologic time? The 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 time that it takes for inflation and then the deflation. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I I, could, I I have not seen that, but I, I looked for that. I didn't see a, a graph of, of that. I just know from uh, uh, 2002, it changed from a deflation and then 2005, it started inflating. It's still inflating today. Um, and you could see back in the Roman times, it went up and down about 25 feet, really. Um, it, it, it extends, the crater goes way out into the, into the Bay, Bay of Naples. Um, prior to 2005, they, they had trouble getting their, their boats to the shore because it, it was starting to come up. And so they, they used to dock and now they couldn't dock anymore. So it's, it, it happens fairly quickly, uh, but I don't have that long-term graph. That'd be perfect to find out. Another one from Zoom here. Yeah, um, Anne asks, what is the name of the Nova Show that some of these volcano pictures are coming from? Nova Show? Oh, it's um, it's uh, Camp A. Flagre. It's what Scott was saying, probably the most dangerous volcano in, in the world. Yeah, and they, and they actually have had two uh, episodes, so um, recent ones. And this, this one that I... I you know, used a lot of the slides from uh, was, was just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 Go ahead. Well, Carrie commented on the same the same volcano. So she said, "So it's breathing, but I wonder what effect sea level rise will have." Uh, you know, that's a great question, Carrie. Um, you know, the 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 climate change has has an effect on volcanic activity, and it's it's it, it's you know the idea that you have a magma chamber and a, a magma conduit moving up. And if you have more water on top, it's going to tend to suppress that. And if you think about Iceland, if you have a big ice cap on there and a volcano tries to get up and out of the ice cap, if you have a thick ice cap on there, it gets restrained. But if you thin the ice cap, so suddenly the pressure on that magma chamber and the conduit changes and you could get an eruption based on the fact that you have less weight on top. So there's there's a couple ways that climate change, sea level rising would tend to dampen that, but the melting of the ice would tend to enhance it. So you, you, you can you could look at it both ways. And, then, and there's some papers that talk about the rate of, of seafloor spreading and all that, because when you have a, a, a a divergent boundary, you know, where you basically have the magma moving up, you're actually lifting up the plate. Um, and then that, that actually raise, raises the ocean level. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, but, you know, that's, I think that's the science is still out on a lot of that. Yeah, question there. Go ahead, Denny. Um, this big loop in the subduction areas of the, uh, is that the Aegean Sea, I guess? Uh, yeah, Adriatic. Adriatic, yeah. Thanks, Carl. Adriatic, okay. Uh, is the crust moving away from the axis? Yeah. So is there rifting going on? I, I don't know exactly. Uh, I think it's just a, a, a ripple in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Scott. Uh, just one additional thing. At Campy Flagway, 
I used to take my students to the Sulpapara. And this is a place where you can actually go right out and, and, and with a guide, and they'll tell you where to go, and they'll drop a rock down, and there'll be hollow underneath. So it's kind of neat. And the other thing is, uh, official invitation afterwards, if anybody is interested, we will have a chance to uh, go down to the geology office. We do have uh, four bottles of wine, if you would like to sip four different types of wine, learn a little bit about terroir, and then discuss uh, uh, further questions with Bill. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, we can't officially invite. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I can invite you, but not you, son. Yeah, <laughs> and that, that invitation goes to you folks on Zoom as well. <laughs> uh, uh, one question from Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, one more question here. If there's a major eruption near Naples, do you expect the same type of tsunami effect as before from Vesuvius, and how many people would be impacted? Yeah, I don't see Vesuvius. Um, yeah, I don't see that yeah. causing a tsunami, but Stromboli and Etna, for sure, they're right on the coast. Uh, that Marcella, uh, I think that's really an unknown. I, I would worry about Marcella. Uh, I, I, I don't see Vesuvius. I, I think Vesuvius has is, is got its own issues. I mean, the plenty of eruptions um, that are, you know, uh, again, I think the the worry in my mind is is Campi Flegre, and and I would I would focus on that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, and the, and the and the tsunami warning or uh, worry, I'd be down by Stromboli or uh, Etna would be my concern. Yeah, go ahead. Another question here. Just we want to thank you. <laughs> oh.